Hey, what's going on everyone? Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be, and welcome back to Backbrace channel. My name is Amir, and today I want to answer a question or dive into a popular question I get all the time. Which language is better, Go or Golang or Rust? So, Go or Rust, which is better? Now, if you've been following me, you might know I have a personal favorite but I will save that for a bit later. So let's start by introducing these two languages for those of you who don't know what Go is and what Rust is. So both of those languages are modern, powerful, and designed to handle different types of challenges. But they have some pretty unique design philosophies that make them shine in different ways or in different areas. Go was developed at Google, as you may know, and was built with simplicity and efficiency in mind. And I always mention Ken Thompson, and Ken Thompson co-founded the Go programming language at Google. And he had this, you know, minimalistic uh, mindset when he was designing or co-designing the language. So the language itself is perfect for quickly developing scalable systems. And again, I'm going to talk about the minimalist syntax. So the minimalist syntax here of Go is concentrating or emphasizing on clean, readable code that's easy to maintain. Now, you have Rust, on the other hand, that comes from Mozilla Firefox company and is known for its emphasis on safety and control over system resources. So, if you're looking to handle memory safely and avoid certain types of bugs entirely, Rust is the tool for you. Now, I will be honest with you. I personally prefer Go. That doesn't mean that you need to love Go as well. No, I'm just telling you what I think. And one big reason for that is the beautiful syntax. It's beautiful to be minimalistic, meaning you can write concise, readable and powerful code without too much complexity. I'm very much affected by the Japanese philosophy and Japanese mentality in general. I've worked with the Japanese for a long time and I've actually absorbed a lot of their mental models in life. So that might be a reason why I love minimalism in general, in life, in, in designs. Um, I like simple, nice, clean, you know, designs in general. Um, back to Go. When I'm coding in Go, I feel like I'm focusing more on the logic and less on the language itself. That's something that you don't find in Rust. That doesn't mean that Rust is bad. No, I'm just telling you my, again, my personal opinion. You just take it with a pinch of salt. Um, Go syntax is straightforward and avoids unnecessary symbols. That makes it super easy to pick up and run with. And if you're building a backend service or a CLI tool, for instance, Go simplicity and built-in concurrency features can really help you get things up and running quickly. And let's not forget, Go has excellent concurrency support. I know I haven't created any projects on the channel to show you the concurrency features of Go, but that might follow later. The concept of Go routines, what we call the co-routines, right? So in Go, it's Go routines. The Go routines in Go allows you to handle multiple tasks in parallel without the overhead um, you might find in other languages. That's a game changer for applications that need to scale smoothly. That's in general why I love Go. But while Go might be my personal choice, as I said, Rust has some seriously impressive qualities. And if I had to sum it up in one word, I think you know the word. Yep, it would be safety. Rust's entire design philosophy revolves around ensuring memory safety and preventing certain types of bugs before they even happen. And if you're a Rust programmer or a student, you know that Rust has what's called ownership and borrowing. So instead of relying on garbage collection, Rust's memory management model ensures that you don't run into unexpected runtime errors due to memory issues. And this, and this feature makes it a great choice for systems programming and projects where you need maximum control over the hardware. And with Rust, you get an extremely performant language close to C and C++ speeds, as you know, or you don't know. But really, Rust is very close to C and C++ in terms of performance, speed, and so on, but with added memory safety. All right, so that's C or C++ on steroids. Um, at least that's the way I see it. 
That's why you see it being used in performance sensitive applications like game engines, for example, um, operating system components, and even in the blockchain world, by the way. And I remember not long ago, I've posted um, a blog post on dev.to about cybersecurity with Rust. And that's very interesting. I highly encourage you to read that post. I'm going to leave the link in the description. Make sure to check it out. Now, if I'm going to compare the dev experience from your standpoint as a developer, you have Go's ease versus the Rust's depth. So what do I mean by that? When it comes to the development experience, the simplicity of Go means you can build faster with less cognitive load. You don't need to spend too much time learning complex language rules, so it's very beginner friendly. And Go's standard library is also rich. It makes it ideal for web services, backend, backend applications, for example, um, network programming, although that's an area that I've, um, I haven't explored in the channel yet. Um, I might do also network programming in Go like we've done with Python. But yeah, that's that's in general. Um, Go has um, the, the standard library of Go is really rich and, you know, you can do almost everything with it. Rust, meanwhile, has a steeper learning curve. And that's one comment that I read often in my Rust tutorials on the channel that a lot of you guys are complaining from Rust complexity. Um, yeah, as I said, it has a steeper learning curve. But I assure you, once you get the hang of Rust, you can write code that's not only safe, but also incredibly performant. And for some, Rust's strictness might feel like a limitation. But um, if you're building something where performance and safety are key, of course, it's worth the initial effort. Now, the most important question is here, who should choose Go and who should choose Rust? Let's start by Go first. So who is Go perfect for? If you're a developer who wants to build a web server, API backend, or anything that requires smooth concurrency, Go might just be the language for you. It's quick to write, easy to read, and has a supportive community and growing ecosystem. Go simplicity also makes it great for teams. So if you're working in a, how I can put it, um, a fast paced environment, which I'm sure that a lot of us are, or with a large code base, Go syntax encourages clean, maintainable code. For me, that's very important. Take everything what I'm telling you guys with a pinch of salt. That's purely subjective. And uh, yeah, you're free to make up your mind after you know, you, you see the pros and cons of both languages. Now, who should choose Rust? Rust is going to be a perfect language for you as a developer if you want maximum control over performance and memory. So if you're working in areas like um, systems programming, obviously, game development, um, anything that needs precise resource management, Rust could be your best tool or best choice here. And I know some of you guys said that Rust is relatively a new language, I know, but it has been gaining popularity in fields where safety and performance are essential. So it might take a bit longer to learn, but once you have mastered it, you are in a really strong position to tackle some of the most challenging programming tasks out there. So at the end, which language is better? Well, that depends on your goals. As I said, that was purely subjective. But if you want clean minimalist syntax that are focused on backend systems or concurrent applications, Go simplicity and speed might be the way to go. If safety, control and high performance are your priorities, then of course, Trust is going to be an incredibly powerful choice. For me, I love Go's readability and ease of use, as I said, but I can totally see why Rust's safety and performance are appealing, especially for more complex applications. So that's it, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Let me know in the comments below which language you prefer or if you're thinking about learning one of them. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content on programming, tutorials and tech insights. Thanks so much for listening and see you in the next video.